my first walk in 14 years without Blossom. She finally passed the St. Bernard. There goes Foxy. Uh, hi, say hi, Woomby. Woomby. Uh, my first walk in 14 years without Blossom. You know, as George Carlin said, life is a series of dogs. But Blossom was deeply special. When I first met Blossom, I saw this runt of the St. Bernard litter and all the other dogs submitting to her. And I go, okay, I want that one. And then, because they knew that I had skills and stuff, they called me the next day and Ruffy, Ruffy Doofus was her father. I went and rescued him. At the time, he was 85 pounds, and he ended up being, uh, what, 185. <laughs> and, and so he was a great dog. And then, you know, with those two together, Blossom only made it to 100 pounds. And that's why, you know, I've never had a St. Bernard over 10 years. And that's why he made it. I mean, why she made it to 14 years old. And so, yeah, Blossom. Blossom was like, and then when she was young, I was doing a lot of alpine touring, which is skiing on the mountains, climbing the mountains and skiing down them with downhill skis. And I trained her for avalanche. And so, you know, I must really stink because I could never hide from her. I would do my best to ditch Blossom and she would find me every time. And so she was like, she had a nose of noses. And another thing that Blossom was great about was that she, um, <laughs> so funny, all the boy dogs could be all rah, 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 and all playing at roughhousing. And then she walks in the room or walks into the air, walks into the area, and all the boy dogs like drop to their knees, and oh, the queen, the queen! All dogs submitted to her for some reason, and so she was like that her whole life. I mean, she never got in a fight with any other dog. All she had to do was raise her lip, and everybody would just drop to the floor. Okay, Blossom. Okay, Blossom, including me. <laughs> and she was a deep communicator. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, what a deep communicator. Because, uh, I mean, she just had to look at me and, and we go like, you know, and she says, well, we go like this. That means I'm hungry. And, she, and then she would like look at me and like, and she look over there where we go. And she says, I want to go for a walk. I go, okay, let's go for a walk. <laughs> and so she was bossy blossom. You know, that's how I, you know, dogs get their name. You know, is that I give them one for training, Blossom, and they earn one. Well, she earned Bossy Blossom and the Queen. Like that's Woomby Diva. That's Foxy Wild Thing. Because she totally is Wild Thing. She's like, I mean, because she has part fox in her. And so she's like a kitty. <laughs> <laughs> she's, <laughs> it's kind of, she's like our kitty dog, and, but that's Foxy, wild thing, and I am. And she's totally stolen my heart. And what's, I tell you, yeah, it's, it's sad that yesterday I lost her. But you know the positive. You know if you don't embrace the negative, you you don't really enjoy the positive. And you know like we're taught as trusting children to ignore it. You know, like, my dad didn't raise me that way. You know, when you grow up on a ranch, you know, um, euthanizing critters was in your hands. I mean, when they come, there comes that time, like with Blossom, it was weird the way she passed because she started decomposing, like, three days ago, the flies started landing on her like her body was rotting, rotting, but it was, but she was still in it and alive and it was kind of it totally tripped me out that it you know it was like that but then yesterday morning 
I hear her crying even before she wakes up, and I go, I knew it was coming. And I knew it was coming. One of the earliest things in my dad's memory, he says, you know, he goes, son, it's just something that has to be done. And I go, okay, daddy. And, you know, back then, I mean, he had, we had a 22 back then, but, you know, it's just like Blossom. I am, it has to be done. And so I took her out and, you know, we're taught to like bury things, but no Blossom didn't have any kind of drugs in her or anything like that. So I committed her back to nature. And and so there's some, you know, it feels good to let the, um, um, to let the other critters have dinner. <laughs> you know, it's like me when I die, you know, commit me back to nature. Throw them, I was like, when I was up in Squaw Valley, I had a cliff where I'd throw the, throw the critters off of when it was time. And so, but unfortunately with her, with Blossom, it was like, I had, yeah, and I did the same with her dad, is I, I didn't have a gun with me, uh, so I did it with a knife. And so it's, you know, it does it, does it hurt? It's just more interesting, you know, how, you know, that your own personal experience of having to take the life. And let me say it another way. It's like when my dad was on his deathbed, I mean, not the closest person, the person that raised me agile, for lack of a better term, because he was, you know, he was adopted. And he didn't, mom and dad didn't, I mean, his mom and dad, my grandfather, they, my grandfather didn't like his skin color. And so my grandma protected him. And so you know, pretty soon my grandfather fell in love with them, but my dad never lost that base state, like your dogs and stuff. You know, you can, you know, you'll, you'll, you can beat on your dog, hate on your dog, leave, come back. Same with kids, and they up the love on you. And so that, it, and so that my dad, that was his weapon. That's what my weapon is. We up the love. And so yeah, that uh, you know that that whole thing with my dad. He was on his deathbed. And I, um, I had to ask him. I go, Dad, if you want me to bring a gun to you for you, because this was way before assisted suicide and, and all that other stuff, which is something that you know we're taught to ignore all the things about death, you know, because we're in this artificial environment, we're brought, raised in an artificial environment, you know, of natureless nature, <laughs> you know, and and managing nature. So that's why we have all the California wildfires. But anyway, I had to ask him. Because it's a responsibility. I go, Dad, all you have to do is ask, and I'll bring you a gun. He goes, thank you, son. I'll let you know if I need him. Uh, but he passed, like, the next day or two later. And so and I knew it was time. And it's the same. You, you know when it's time. When the, you know, when it's that time when it's like, you know, time, there's, it, it's, if you're here and now, you know, that the pain and the ag, and, you know, that they're feeling. And, and it, you know, it, that's the big thing here, too, is that once you're tuned into the universal subconscious, the first multicellular energy, you know, that, that you know, when, you know, when multicellular, the energy flowing through multicellular life has behavior that's based on seasons. And once you're tuned into it, you know, you realize that it's, you know, when, when, you know, in, like Einstein said, he goes, energy only transforms. So when we die, our biology is still here. Where does that multicellular energy go? Well, look at all the life on the earth from, it only transforms. And look at all the multicellular life on this whole earth. You know, it's like, that's, how did it, how did we get so much life? Well, the energy is transforming and transforming and so, you know, the physics aware energy, us, is, you know, like Blossom has remerged, has merged back into the multicellular energy on the earth. And it's, a, and it's an energy signature we can read from space. I mean, when our awareness of 9-11 happened, all, there's, there was a spike in, in the geosynchronous satellite readings. And that's part of the project that we're that I'm on right, you know, is that is to bring, you know, it's to time the earth, I mean to time our species to the earth and sun. So that that language follows the environment. And so you could imagine reading the energy signature of a city right now and the energy signature of a forest. Okay? And that the difference is 
I mean, oh, it's embarrassing right now. If you, you, know, you turn off all the electromagnetic of a city, all right, and you read the, all the people in the city and read the forest, well, that's how divided from the nature we are. You know, that's a, and, it's a, and it's scientific. You know, there's no denying it. And so, you know, that's what, you know, we have to, you know, like move your finger, model the internet. Us on it. All right? And the new organism growing on this earth. I mean, ever since smoke signals, the, you know, that this wants to, you know, life, there's a repeating truth that happens is that we're always, you know, it's going over and over and over again. I mean, repeating truth. You begin life as a single cell. All right? We all do. You know, that merge of your mother's and your uh, your mother's egg and your father's sperm two into one all right and then the multicellular well we're doing the same thing with the internet and once you know the language follows the environment like music and math that's what g-time does you get that that scientific you know connection to all the people that ever died that you know and that's where, like, the God word came from. You know, it, it got hijacked with language. And, you know, and it's like Galileo said, we are a species orbiting the earth. But because of the concepts of man, which are, you know, it's like when you tell a child that, oh, he's human, well, what the heck is a human? It has no background, no foreground. You know, it's like you need, it's like, a, you know, there's no up without a down. There's no black without a white. <laughs> and so, and I mean, dark, you know, those are all, you know, that you have to have the foreground and background for the universal subconscious to trust us. And that's what happens with us is that we get these concepts fed to us and the universal subconscious goes, this isn't natural. This logic is cancerous. And so that's what happens to us. In fact, that you know, the energy beating your heart, all right, is you until you're like five or six years old. I mean, you can be born in one country and seamlessly raised in another. And what happens is, is that by the time when you get six, that's when the conscious you of language, you know, that's gener you know, that you're, we're all transported from here and now like the critters to, oh, here comes Santa. You know, it's, you got, oh, are you a good boy or are you a bad boy? All right, oh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Well, we lose that connection to, to our base state of here and now that, you know, time has passed. There's time to come. There's only here and now. And from that point of view, and with the literacy objects, we, the language follows environment and we grow life precise. And there's a reason that, you know, I, I, you know, ever since I was a little kid, I've studied how, you know, that, that, how life is grown because I'm from the Central Valley of California. There's another one. There's like, there's no, uh, you know, there would be no valley without, I mean, there'd be no peaks without the valley. That's a background and a foreground. And so that's, we, there, you know, we are a species orbiting the earth and we must supply the growing conditions to the children it's our duty 380 years late but right now we have all these concepts of man that have no background or foreground no peak or valley that that then that's why our universal subconscious we feel those shifts but here's the phenomenon that's really going to set us all free is that when a mother has a baby Boom, boom, boom. She's one with two bodies again. You, follow, you know, that her, she wants the baby to read her mind, and, and that's the, and the baby wants her to read her mind. And so they're one. There's no, you know, they have a background and a foreground that's naturally there. There goes the squirrel hunter. <laughs> nope. There goes the squirrel hunter. And so that, you know, that's what happens is that when the mothers, because the language doesn't follow the environment, they end up, you know, that postpartum depression, that's where that comes from. 
is that they don't, you know, that the mothers get automated away from the here and now with the baby. I mean, babies don't come with instruction manuals. Walking doesn't come with instruction manuals, but talking does. And, and so, you know, that's why we're, you know, like I always say, where's Middle East on a basketball? Well, that's the concepts of man. Tick, tick, tick of the clock. That's concepts of man. You know, just man in itself. We have to abandon the whole man, you know, concept. And this, this is nothing, you know, not, it's not being done already in computer programming. We, uh, we update language all the time. And, and, you know, the internet would not work. If it was not based on the physics of inheritance. <laughs> and so we have to, you know, English, fortunately, is the only, you know, computer science came from English. All right, and that's how I found my way here. It, and so this is scientific. You know, you can read the energy, how it flows through the computer, and you know where the inductions are. Well, you can do the same things in the heads of the mothers. And we got to get, you know, that, that is like, I call them G-moms. They're G-time. Move your finger, model the internet. G-moms. And we got to get them, the literacy objects to them, time the internet to the earth and sun so that the language follows the environment and the mothers will stay and keep their logic, all right? And the, their children, you know, they'll be like mama bears and, and they'll keep their children here and now, like your doggies and your kitties. And we don't destroy the, you know, it's just like, um, it's just like if, if you know, the, these plants, you know, the seeds and the growing environment, we're going to what we're going to do with our species by updating the language to the here and now is that we grow life and amplify it with technology. I mean, my gosh, we're the only species ever to process the world with words, okay? But we don't, you know, we're so ignorant. I mean, ignorant would not be ignorant if it knew it was ignorant. But we're, you know, we're like pretending that processing the world with words is not new. <laughs> but it is new. And we are making the adventure. And we will never be right. But we're going to do right. Okay? And so, let's tie this all back together. Is that Blossom, I felt her this morning when I woke up. That she's like on my back now. Because that energy grows specialty for freedom. And that's what got me here. I trust that, you know, like, just like every cell of my body is a specialist. To move my, you know, just the ones connected to moving my finger. And, so, and my whole body, and it grows a specialty for freedom. And so that's what I'm doing with, with want to do with you. So we generate that here and now collective behavior that it transcends our species. We have a foreground and a background to make decisions so that language follows the environment like music and math. And, you know, and a lot of this we owe to Blossom and Ruffy. Because I, when I went up into the mountain and, and threw away millions and, and, you know, applied computer science on myself, it's like, you know, and got all this data back. Discoveries don't need the discoverer. All right? G time, Galileo time, is a state of mind more than it is a time, you know, because you're here and now. Okay? And everything that's been done is great. But what's to come? is more important and all the people that ever died that you know has transformed into the multicellular energy and they are watching and we are going to be the first to leave the world better in the scope of recorded history but then every year you know every year for after us it'll get better and better and better and more amplified children will get control over machines with their language installed and oh my gosh we will never be surpassed in history as a generation. I call it the G time generation. You know, integrity, our generation integrity is measurable from space. You know, that's what I'm, you know, remember we started this is like in 9-11, that, you know, read a city, read a forest. And so on the zero, which is in nine days, it's G, year G3, not 09, until the zero and I want to make a full run of to G40 with you amplifying me and me amplifying you and growing 
the collective behavior that's within you and me, here and now, G time. Mm. Blossom. I think Blossom was talking to you. I just was rambling. I, my mouth was just going, and Blossom's going, I'm the queen. On your knees. Bow down. Okay, Blossom. Whatever you want, I serve you. Gosh. Was it, I was just so wonderful to spend my life with Blossom. What a great girl. Love you all.